Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to those who've braved the heat this morning. Very warm welcome. Let's pray as we begin our worship. Father, we come this morning to worship you. We come to honour you. We come to lift your name on high. We come, Lord, to thank you to bring our gratitude for all that you do and all that you have done. Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts and minds this morning and that you would go before us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with, you. with you. As we come to our prayers of penitence, the gospel calls us to turn away from sin and to be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. So we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving Amen. thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Oh 
Our reading from the Old Testament this morning is from Psalm 14. The fool stays in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand any who seek God. All have turned away, they have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Will evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread, and who do not, who do not call on the Lord. There they are, overwhelmed with dread for God is present in the company of the righteous you evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor but the Lord is their refuge oh that salvation from Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. This is the word of the Lord. Jenny is going to come and preach to us this morning and read our second reading. So just pray for Jenny. Father, we pray that you would speak your word through Jenny. Lord, that you would touch our hearts and minds, that you would encourage her as she speaks of you. Lord, that your Holy Spirit might encourage and work in all our lives to your glory amen good morning the Gospel reading comes from John chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. The first part is Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked at this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And he did the same with the fish. When they'd all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Jesus walks on water. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake towards Capernaum. 
Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified. But he called out to them, Don't be afraid, I am here. Then they were eager to let him in the boat and immediately they arrived at their destination. So I'm going to talk this morning about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So let's go back to that. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're part of the crowd in the story of the miracle of loaves and fish. You've been listening intently to Jesus' words all day. You've travelled a great distance. It's been a long day, you're tired and hungry, and you realise that you didn't bring anything to eat because you didn't expect to be out for so long. But there was something about this man, Jesus, who captivated you by his words and his healing. However, there are no KFCs or McDonald's, no Burger Kings or local chippies to get something to eat. So what will happen now? Your tummy is beginning to rumble loudly and you're aware of others around you getting restless. You hear Jesus tell his disciples to find food for the people, but they insist that even if they had enough money, which they didn't, there wasn't anywhere to buy food from anyway, which were your own thoughts exactly just a few moments ago. To make matters worse, you realise that the only food that is available is just five small loaves of bread and two small fish, a pack-up that belongs to a small boy. How could you go and take his pack up from him? And maybe there'd be a riot if people knew there was such a little amount to go round. Would the people crush together to snatch it away? Oh dear, the situation could get really nasty. Perhaps it would be better to leave now. Then you hear Jesus tell the disciple who brought the boy to him to hand the food over to Jesus. Your ears puck up. Puck up perk up and your mind as somersaults as you see Jesus taking the food, blessing it and giving out to the crowd. And amazingly, little by little, group by group, the people are asked to sit down. When everyone is seated, the disciples give out the bread and fish and miracle upon miracle, it doesn't seem to get any less. You're reminded of the time Elijah helped a poor widow in Zarephath after she'd fed him with bread made with the last of her flour and oil. He promised her that the, her pot of flour and jug of oil would not run out until the rains came. You can find the story of that in 1 Kings 17. So you might wonder if this man Jesus is as important as Elijah. Was Jesus a man of God too? After the meal, the disciples gather up the broken leftover pieces, enough to fill 12 baskets, and there is your answer. Only an important man of God could make food go so far and have leftovers too. Does this remind you also that God produced manna for the Israelites in the desert on a request for Moses? Wow, this is all getting very exciting. No one wants to leave now because another miracle might happen. But eventually people began to drift away as Jesus ceases his preaching and there are no more miracles. Darkness closes in and you leave as well, while you can still find your way. And you'll need to keep up with those carrying flaming torches to light the way. Let's leave that scene now and think about why this is, this is important to us. Jesus the teacher feeds our minds. He teaches us not only through his word, but also through the vicar, the worship leader, the worship group of singers and musicians, those who read the Gospel and the Old Testament pa passages or the epistles, and those who lead in intercessions. In fact, he teaches through everyone who does his work in the church family. Like the bread and the fish, his teaching materials are never used up. In fact, they are multiplied because those of us who are taught by him can go out and teach others. By doing so, we do our part to fulfill the Lord's great commission, namely, go forth into the world and make disciples of all nations. 
God doesn't mind what we offer to him, as he can use anything and everything we offer in faith. In order for Jesus to feed the crowd spiritually, he needed to feed them physically. For without the physical food, the people could not receive the spiritual food because they were too hungry to concentrate on spiritual things. The same applies to Holy Communion, for it is through the physical food of the bread and wine that we receive the spiritual food Christ offers, just like the disciples did at the Last Supper. Excuse me. God accepts us for who we are and in doing so, accepts whatever we offer to him in faith and thanksgiving. Our offering can be big or small, as long as it is given in the right spirit, not grudgingly. God doesn't mind how much we offer, as long it is with, as it is with a willing spirit, because he uses whatever we offer to do his work in our world and in our daily lives. When God accepts our individual offerings, he blesses them and combines them with the offerings of fellow believers. He uses this combination to build and multiply what he gives to his people in return. This is like the parable of the mustard seed. God takes something very small, like our individual offerings, and makes it grow into something bigger and better, namely faith in him. The loaves and fish represent more than just physical food. They also represent the spiritual food and nourishment God offers to us. God is all-seeing, all-knowing, and his love knows no limits. He shows his love by offering spiritual nourishment to his people. The spiritual nourishment is so vast that we can't absorb it all at once. There are always leftovers, just like there were leftovers that were gathered up in baskets by the disciples. Just like we need to eat physical food daily to live physically, we also need to keep partaking of the spiritual nourishment daily in order for our faith to live. Our human inability to absorb every single item we are taught challenges God to keep reminding us about his love and power. Just as our human ability to sometimes ignore what he has to teach us challenges him to keep reminding us. The sharing of the loaves and fishes also represents God sharing his wisdom and love with his children. The leftover food reminds us that God's love and wisdom overflows our mind and soul, as well as our capacity to absorb what he offers to us. Whatever overflows can still be eventually absorbed by us, as long as we continue to seek his spiritual nourishment. But God doesn't offer spiritual food without requiring something from us in return. When he feeds us, he also asks us to nourish, teach, help and lead others. He asks us to feed the multitudes by offering what we can. As we distribute the spiritual food, it increases and fills the soul, much like the physical food of the loaves and fishes increased and fed the crowds who came to get hear Jesus. The Holy Communion is a physical representation of the distribution of the spiritual food God offers us. Just like the crowd received the physical food of the loaves and fishes in thanksgiving, we receive the food of bread and wine in thanksgiving for the spiritual food of our Lord's most precious body and blood when we come to him in faith. God always likes us to know that we likes to know that we have faith in him. When we don't show it openly, he asks us to prove that we have faith. That's why Jesus asked the disciples where they could find food for the crowd. I suppose he could simply have made manna rain down from heaven like he did for the Israelites after Moses led them out of slavery in Egypt, but he didn't. He knew that even the disciples couldn't understand everything he had taught them, and the crowd too. But their understanding was caused not by ignorance, but by lack of faith. After all, they had been at his side for a long time, and had heard his teaching and seen his miracles. Whereas the crowd gathered to see him that one time, much as we would gather to see a famous musician 
who might come to perform in a major city only once or twice in his entire career. The small numbers of loaves and fishes that was offered to Jesus in faith by the boy led to a bountiful harvest for the multitudes. Even a small amount of faith in Jesus leads to a bountiful harvest of spiritual food and blessings for his people. Jesus used the request for food to provide the old saying that big things come in small packages. In John 6, 27, Jesus tells us, do not work for food which spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. What this tells us is that spiritual food is much more important than, spiritual, than physical food. Spiritual food is necessary for the survival of our spiritual life, just like physical food is important for the survival of physical life. Spiritual food allows us to understand what God has in store for us, what he wants us to do in our lives, and what is in store for us in our heavenly home. God wants to give us this food because he loves us. All we have to do is come before him in humility and faith. Just as we have to eat physical food in order to live, we also need to receive spiritual food on a regular basis. That is why many of us attend services each week, because we need to hear and receive the spiritual food offered by regular worship and sharing in faith with our Christian friends and fellow church worshippers. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. Just ponder those words for a few moments before we continue. So let us now affirm our faith together with the Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we come to our prayers of intercession. Lord, throughout our lives we hunger and thirst for you. We long for you, we look for you. Nothing in this world can fill us unless you come to us. Lord, we will perish. We will sink amid the storms unless you uphold us. Come and fold us in your peace. O Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. When I say, Lord, you open, Lord, you open your hands. When we say, Lord, when I say, Lord, you open your hands, can we all say, and you meet our needs. Lord, in all of life you provide for us. You feed us, you support us, you love us. 
you fill us with the glory of your presence. Lord, as we have greatly received, may we share with others, just as that boy in the story. May we share the good news and all that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for all those organisations that are daily sharing your goodness. Lord, we thank you for Christian Aid and for Oxfam, Lord, for the Red Cross and for Save the Children, for Tear Fund and the many other charities that are so generous. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. Creator God, bless all who provide us with our needs. We pray for the farmers and the fishermen in our world, especially in areas where crops have failed and there's been difficulties. We pray for all those who are suffering because of natural disasters, for those areas in Canada that are flooded, uh, that are with, natural, with wildfires, and in Yorkshire. Lord, we remember those in Europe, Lord, particularly in Germany, those who've lost loved ones in the floods. Lord, we remember all who work to transport and sell us the food that we have in our shops. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. Lord, we pray for all who are without resources, homes where there is hunger and poverty, places where people suffer from malnutrition and people who are in debt. For those who've had homes and possessions repossessed. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. We pray for all those who are tr struggling at this time, who feel tossed by storms. We pray for those we love who are ill. Particularly, we pray for Jack Archer, for John, for Neil, for Helen, for Fred and for Trudy. Lord, and for all those friends and family with COVID who are suffering and who are suffering with long COVID. Lord, draw close to them, we ask. Pour your peace on their fearfulness and anxiety. And give them your strength. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. We remember all who have gone before beyond the storms of life and are now at peace in your eternal presence. Father, we thank you for the life of Mike, for all that he meant to so many of us, for all that he did to forward your kingdom. We pray for Heather and Rachel and Chris, for Andrew, for Ada and Reuben, Lord, in this coming week. Thank you that you draw close to them, that they know you, and Lord, that they are living in your strength alone. We commit them to you. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. Let's continue your prayers with the Lord's Prayer as we say together the prayer that our Saviour taught us our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Before we 
conclude this, just a couple of things to, to say. Um, in the next week, we'll be um, talking about cautious changes after the um, releasing of lockdown rules. So bear with us as we um, work together with the diocese and with the church to ensure safety for people and, and a fair way of um, helping things to get back to um, normal of some kind. And we're just going to watch for a moment a video from um, a new wine conference that's going to be online this year. And what we're going to do is have um, the evening celebrations, the evening meetings um, broadcast here between the July the 29th and August the 3rd, the 3rd from well, 6.45 for 7pm meeting. So we want to encourage you to come along to those. So Wolf. come to our conclusion. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to him. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and may the blessing of the Lord Jesus always be with you and also with you. So let's end by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh